Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary on Nantucket. And with me is my friend Allison Forsgren. Thank you very much for joining me again, You're Allison. We, we are co-hosting the show, the point of which is to allow you as seniors to know all of the issues and the people that you should be that you should know in order to understand the programs that are happening here in Nantucket. And today we have one of those players that you just have to know, our friend Rachel <laughs> Day. Um, <clears throat> Whom, whom we've both known for a while, and I had yes. met her once, and she had been on back when in the old on the old show, the old and show. back when you were younger, and you were the administrator <laughs> yeah. of our island home, and now you're That's doing other correct. stuff, right? Yep. And now you're the director of human, human services. services, the director of human services yes. for the for the for the town. For the town. Uh, and so we wanted to just kind of talk to you about a whole bunch of stuff. Allison had said, "Well, this would, should really be one of our first guests." To just oh, kind of talk you. about where, where things where things are, but once again, just for the for the sake of that handful of people that don't know you here, okay. can you just kind of talk about so how did you get here? I think you're one of those actual genuine people who grew up here. And I grew up here, yes. Yeah? Uh, born and raised, both sides of my family, multi generations. So I am here, invested here. in the community from the start. Um, I went away to school and I actually thought I was going to go into early childhood education, but mm -hmm. I started working at the senior center one summer and moved over to the nursing home about a year later and just slowly moved up. Was that still there. while you were in school? Was nope, that, I had no. just graduated with my right. bachelor's and I was debating on what to go back for for my master's and couldn't quite get a handle on where yeah. or what yeah. specifically I wanted to do. And my mom said, well, Figure it out. Go get a job. So I did. So I became the administrator officially of the nursing home in about 2011, early mm -hmm. 2011, and I was there for a while. Um, the consolidations for the town happened about the same time, so the current administrator moved over to what is now known as the director for human services position, yeah. and they still oversaw the nursing home. I um, see. And then once she retired. Uh, which was coming in on four years now, um, they looked at it and said, well, what exactly do we still want this person to oversee? And seeing that I had the license, um, they thought it made sense that I continued to move up. And then they filled yeah. me as the day-to-day -day administrator at the nursing home. Um, that proved to be a very long search. Um, so I In the continued. meantime, a very taxing job, I would bet. Yes, was, uh, two jobs or two three. Two jobs. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> So I can see she's aged. To... I remember her as a younger, a younger person when I Arthur. met her. Four years, it was four years ago when I met her, actually. I was supposed to say that to you. Uh, uh, no, but that is true. Yeah. It has, I have known you a very long time. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I continued to work as the administrator. Uh, many people really started to know who I was as the administrator because we were working on a new island home. Um, and I was involved in a lot of that or a lot of public forums and I think that's maybe where if people didn't already know who I was they maybe kind of got yeah. an idea at that time um, but I also continued with the human service job at the same time um, and that was a little over three years so that was really hard um, I started feeling that you know after a little while only one person can do so much so I didn't want either right. position or department necessarily to suffer um, and so we really stepped up on the search um, through the town, and that's when we got a new administrator in uh, March of this year. And we've talked about also inviting him on at some yes. point. I think that'll be kind of fun. Yeah, he's a seasoned yeah. administrator, so you know he comes with a lot of knowledge from industries and um, in Massachusetts. So he might be a good resource to have on. Right. Too. And, and I know that in the meantime, of course, you know, this whole, a lot of the conversation c has continued around our island home. Yes. As we were, as we were, you know, we were mm. talking a little bit er earlier, it sounds like that is a little bit clearer now in terms of what the directions are. And I wanted mm -hmm. to talk about that. But for, I guess it, maybe more for my benefit than because you folks are both here all the time. Can you talk, can you talk a few, for a few minutes about kind of the rest, about you know, what, the, what, what, the human, what the other human services components are that you're sure. overseeing? And your sense of how those work, and, and maybe your sense of how it fits in with our island home, which is certainly a real, a real piece. Sure. Right. Um, is that a fair? Yeah, I think that's that sounds a kind great. of a fair yeah. question. Okay. So, 
human services director, not to be confused with human resources, which it often is. For which many. I just did about yeah. 10 minutes ago. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have You're well. not the only yeah. one. Yeah. Many people do it. Yeah. Um, so ultimately, what my role in the town is, is uh, it's a lot of collaboration with the groups in the community, such as a lot of the nonprofits that offer services to the individuals in need in the community. So um, many people know that the town has a certain amount of grant funding, so to speak, that mm -hmm. they provide to nonprofits to meet a certain need in the community. And that's called, it's done through the Contract Review Committee. And so we usually get anywhere between, say, nine and up to maybe 15 applicants and there's a certain amount of money and that group reviews the grants and divvies it out so oh, this is actually f fun funding that has come to the town like in the past they set it and, aside and yep. that, and that you, so and you're actually administering these out. I see yep. so I there see. was some services years ago that the human service department did provide directly so fuel mm -hmm. assistance um, and you know filling out certain insurance enrollment applications but a long time ago it was determined that these are already things that are being done by groups in the community so why don't we support those groups rather than duplicating efforts and I think that's kind of a lot of where some of this happened um, there was a community needs assessment years and years ago that kind of said okay these are the top priorities of the community so mm -hmm. let's make sure that the money that the town is providing is helping to meet those causes uh, another one hasn't been done by the human services group in a really long time unfortunately that committee isn't very active right now because it doesn't have enough members on it to mm -hmm. meet um, all those lovely town requirements that require a quorum in order yeah. for you to meet we don't quite meet that right now there so by the way are you so are you looking for more members is, is this we are is part of this an ad <laughs> so this is an ad no because that's really important that's it really is. in, in it terms is. of getting this part right there are know? several other um, committees as well that need help. Do you yeah, know what those are? Yeah, there are a lot. Um, well, recently the Council on Aging, right? but oh, speaking of Allison, which. as the chair of that, did a great job filling those in. Recruiting, yes. Yeah. Um, but a lot of the others I'm not as involved in, so I really wouldn't speak to whether they just vac filled a lot of those vacancies or not, but the two main ones that I do is the Human That's Services. Right. And, those, and they could bring and that up on aging. somebody else's show, right? This is right. the senior show, yes, so we're pushing yes, yes. Council on Aging and Human <laughs> yeah. Services. Okay, That's um, good. But they yeah. recently, the last time they did meet, they talked about we really do need a new assessment to determine what are the true community needs. Like, what should this department be focused on? What should this group be focused on? Um, but the hospital ended up doing that as part of their requirement with their new building. So we didn't want to duplicate efforts there at all. Um, so that would be kind of the premises that we would build off of. Yeah. Um, and then the Nantucket Center for Elder Affairs, they also recently did one very specific to the seniors and the senior center. So we could use that as part of the senior population because unfortunately that wasn't really recognized as a top, top priority um, in the community through the hospital one. Um, there were things such as behavioral health, um, substance abuse education, housing, obviously. So those yep. were more came out on top than senior needs, but obviously that's my department. So <laughs> we want to make sure that stays a top priority in Understood. the community. Understood. Yeah. Understood. One thing I'd like to clarify is that all of the acronyms that yeah, worst. they're fun. <laughs> yeah, if, if you aren't a town employee or don't work in a large mm -hmm. corporation, um, the NCEA is... Yep, yep. The, oh, that's yeah. why I said yeah. it out, just Nantucket in case. Center so the for Nantucket Elder Center for Elder Affairs. And a lot of times it's very easy um, in order to understand their role in some of this is to look at them almost as the support fundraising arm for the programming and the Council on Aging and the Senior Center. So it's almost like the Friends of the Senior Center. Ultimately, yes. That's how you can look at them do, as do they, a Do they need anything else other than just work with senior No, officials? they kind of developed mm -hmm. through because they own, own the, the building. building. Because they the own the marsh. Building. Yep. So the building that the senior center operates out of right now and also where my office currently is, they own that. But the town owns the land that the building sits on. And the town owns the, the employees, I guess you could say. Well, they don't own the employees, but they you supply the yeah. employees that oh. do the senior center programming. So, so that's actually paid by the nonprofit? No. Oh, no, 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 no. Is the NCAA town. a non NCEA is a nonprofit and they own the building. The physical plant. That we use. I see. Yep. So I see. that's where that relationship yep. kind of overlaps. But the employees are all town of Nantucket. The employees employees. are all town, yes. I get it. I get it. Um, so they help and their focus is the building, um, maintenance of it, and doing those things while we handle the programming um, and other 
related needs. And, and is the NCA, I have to ask, so is NCEA one of those entities to which the town gives a grant? To do, to uh, do they could be. They um, could, I see. Not right now. They've not applied, but they certainly could. Um, I see. They would qualify as somebody that, if they had a program specific that they wanted to implement, they certainly could. They do their own fundraising. They do. And have greatly developed their board in the last four or five years. It was down to almost. Very yeah, they've, they've done an amazing job. Um, I know when I first became the human service director, uh, it was um, it was a little scattered. They didn't have a lot of momentum anymore, um, and you know they struggled a little bit. But they got a few interested people, and they're a very active board now. They have a great group of people, yeah. um, and they're certainly trying to do some really good things. Oh, and if um, we were inviting somebody to this show to, to from that group, who would that be? Would there be an um, Joe Aguirre is on the board. Joe Aguirre, yeah. Gene yep. Grimmer. There are several people who. So we should really, we should, we should really talk about sure. that. Doing well. That'd be great. That's great. And uh, Julie Fitzgerald as well. Um, yep. She does their strategic plan. I think she's part of that committee that does that. So she might be a good one as well to yep. kind of uh, get a gauge of where they're at or where they might be going. Um, but they were one of the ones that had done their own assessment of uh, senior needs in the community, especially. Mm -hmm directed towards the center. Um, and so I guess maybe going yeah. back to your original question, as the human services director, I oversee the Salmar Senior Center. Yeah. I still oversee the Island Home. Yeah. Uh, the Commission on Disability ultimately falls underneath me, but they're a very independent board. Um, there's not much interaction that's needed there. They are very good at what they do. Yeah. Um, and then the Veterans Agent. And, um, but there's a lot of other things. So like I mentioned, the Council for Human Services that does the contract review committee funding for other agencies in the community. Um, we manage the senior tax work off program. So anybody that meets the income and age criteria can work in certain town departments, not doing what are, is already being done by town employees, but kind of helping out in those departments to help work off um, their tax bills and that's at a that's at a fixed rate which comes right yeah off of it's their a tax maximum bill? of uh, 1500 I believe for I each see. year and that's man that's um, regulated through the state so and we you're, can't and you're change managing that. that but you're managing that yep also. our department takes the applications and puts them in the departments and makes sure that the hours are verified and then provides it to the assessors for the credit so you still have plenty to do. I guess the yeah. bottom line is just still right. Not even though you're not doing the island home <laughs> yeah. right now. That's very yeah, exciting. It is now, and I think there was one other thing we kind of talked. We were talking about a little bit beforehand. Could, mm -hmm. could you just you had mentioned in the course of talking about the NCEA that kind of this 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 kind of it, the ongoing conversations. Yeah. Is it within the NCEA or even with a, with a broader group now to talk about? The possibility of growing, growing the senior center, or you know, looking yeah. for more. Yeah. Yeah, I touched on it. Um, sorry, there's just so many exciting things going on. That uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> I go off on tangents sometimes. Yes. Um, but yes, so they did their own study. Uh, I believe we got the report uh, around December of 2017, mm -hmm. and that group came. Um, they did some presentations around the community, and then they presented uh, to the select board this report this assessment and some of the things that came out of that and a lot of what they were looking at is um, a lot of people in the Nantucket community are aging as well as across the country they want to stay here they want to stay in this community and how many people are accessing the senior center how many people would if they knew more about it and what exactly are we looking at what we're currently doing over there so a lot of what we're looking at, and a lot of what NCE, NCEA focuses on is, is the building big enough to meet our needs now and in the future? And I think a lot of people are in agreement that it is a small center. There's a limited amount of space. You can only do so much programming at any given time. Um, a lot of people say, well, why can't you offer this or why don't you do this? Well, the available slots, so to speak, that are in the calendar are so limited that it's really hard. And sometimes you don't want to set a standard thing and fill every single slot because then if you have somebody who wants to come down and maybe introduce what they're doing in the community or here's a new business that's starting up that might be a benefit for you or here's an educational program or here's an expert that's coming from off island and we have nowhere to put them, 
you don't want to not be able to offer that because there's no spots. Right. What is the reason why um, th there could be nothing in the building at night? Is it just because town buildings close at four? No, um, it's, it's more generated towards, uh, and this has also come up about satellite spots. Mm -hmm. So that's great that there might not be enough space there, but no. what if we did it over here? Like what if they offered their space, could you do the programming over there? Ultimately the answer is yes, but you still need a salt marsh center employee there. On the somebody needs to open the building, somebody right. needs to close right. the building. Right. You can't right. just leave it open all night. And there are two salt marsh employees there are two. that fit the bill. So. Yep. There's the director and then <clears throat> there's the assistant. And it, 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 it's to their benefit right now that myself and then the business office coordinator for human services happens to be in the same building. So I was going to say, I thought there were more people. Yeah, that's it you. seems like that's there right. are, but yeah. ultimately there are just two employees for the senior center. I see. Um, but myself and then the, the Anne Medina, who's actually the business office coordinator for human services, um, we're also in the building right now because there's limited office space and we don't mind it. Um, but I do know in the beginning um, when Pam Merriam was the director, um, Pam and Ann's office was actually on Bathing Beach Road. So that used to be where they were for a little bit um, until they moved over to the senior center. So it is, it is hard. Um, right now, um, they're staffed okay for what's being offered, but when you do start talking about expanding or you do start talking about maybe more classes in the evening or right, something right. at another location, right. then we do become a little bit limited. Um, and you know there is some talk about is there a way around that you know could council on aging members assist um, since NCEA if they're sponsoring a program and they want to be a part of it right. could so maybe one of them of be entrusted to it so right. there's some questions there liability is always a concern and I think you had talked about the fact I can't remember if this was before we started that there's actually a working group or a, yes. that's recently been appointed yep. by the select so board. So their no. report was yeah. presented to the select board and they asked if a work group could be created to really dive into this and look at this. Um, and the select board did vote to support that. Um, so it has not met yet. I believe members are still being appointed, but they determined that a work group through the town will be created. They will be looking at the current property, uh, non-town-owned property, uh, the current operations of the Saltmarsh Center and maybe future programming, expansion possibilities. Um, yeah. So are we offering enough? Is the building big enough? Is it not? So those type of charges. Um, they also want to look at and have a little bit more collaboration with communities of similar um, size for a center to see what they're doing. And the concept of maybe also combining it with the community centers other communities have done. Um, is also part of their um, yep. charge, so to speak. And there's seven members that the select board recommended. So two from the Nantucket Center for Elder Affairs, um, two from the Nantucket's Council on Aging, uh, select board member, uh, member of the capital committee, because obviously financing it, ongoing operations and capital expenditures are important in the conversation yep. as well. And one from the finance committee. Um, and then as a staff liaison, I That's would be you. a part of it, but I would not necessarily be a committee board member, um, but I would be part of the work group. And actually, because those meetings are town, are um, Robert's rules or open meeting laws, open meeting laws yeah. they will be um, posted and Absolutely. anyone can go to them. So that's, if you're yep. interested in the in what's happening, those meetings will be open to the public. So that's, yep. exci you know, that's exciting. I'm not 100% sure if all the members have been um, voted by all the remaining groups. I think maybe uh, either the Capital Committee or Finance Committee might be the only two. I could be completely wrong on that. Um, but I do know that an initial meeting has not been set up as of yet. Yep. Um, I don't think that there was a real clear, okay, let's get this started by X date. Um, but it is great that it was created and it was good um, that there is some momentum there and there is some recognition that maybe a new building might need to be right. done. Um, I have been asked a few times, um, you know, when is this report that they're supposed to give due yeah. and will there be something on town meeting for it? Um, there, since we don't have a real start end date established, which would likely would be done probably on one of the initial meetings, those questions would likely be asked and maybe directed then. Uh, but for and, and maybe say, we can kind of keep people in touch with oh, all of these yeah. shows, right? Okay. I, I would yeah. I would say it's safe to say that for the annual town meeting of 2019, there will not be anything from this group that will be a 
definite article, right. but there should at least be enough strong of a report or some type of information so that subsequent or future town meetings, there might be something generated from that if whatever they recommend is supported by the board and brought forward to do and so. And this would be for a senior center and or a senior community center? A senior, uh, yes, 100% a senior center. And part of the discussion was, well, there's also a group that's talking about the need for a community center. Um, the Council for Human Services and there was a collaborative many, many years ago that said that this was something that was really, really important. And there was land that they had and they all they needed to do was start fundraising for the actual building. And due to certain circumstances and reasons, um, that never came to fruition. So that still gets discussed a little bit. Where was the land? Uh, I believe it was around Surfside area, on the corner of one of the Surfside areas. Mm -hmm. it's, it's no longer no available. Longer available. <laughs> they come, they go. But so it's one of those yeah. things that one of one of the things that they've mm -hmm. asked this group to do is say, if we're going to do this and it's on town-owned land or you have to buy land to do right. this, would it be beneficial to look at this in the long run and bring both of those items together now, rather than build one here, build one here. Right. Um, and everybody kind of knows the more that you can do up front to combine services and do that, the better off you are in the long run and it's more effective and, and so more efficient. Be, so this would be the right time for that conversation. Yeah, so now, speaking about it's not 100% other... that it's going to be a part right. of the conversation, but that's what this group will determine. I understand, but I also want to, and I, I didn't mean to cut you short, but I just want to make sure we also get in a, some, some conversation about Obviously, the other big one, the island homes. The so, island homes, so, yes. So, yes, speaking of things that may be coming <laughs> up, right, which we were also talking yep. about a little earlier. Mm -hmm. And Allison, you chair the Friends of Our Island Home. And every we've in, I, when I first came here, wow, about, well, this is about six years ago now, six, seven yep. years ago. This wow. was kind of discussed, and it kind of keeps being discussed. So, um, but it seems like that it, there, there is more clarity to all of that. Now, a little yes. Than, than there was maybe even a year ago, which yep. is kind of exciting. So could you kind of speak to that? Sure. Um, the island home and potentially a new building or renovate the new building has mm -hmm. been a discussion since I started working there in 2005. And that was when things really started vamping up. Um, unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, you never know, sometimes things work out the way that they're supposed to. but. It was brought forward to town meeting to build a new facility uh, with Sherburn Commons and an adjacent property um, because there wasn't enough square footage available for the Sherburn Commons property alone for what the town was looking to build as mm -hmm. recommended through the group. Mm -hmm. And that was voted down. Um, there is an understanding that it wasn't necessarily a strong no for this one particular reason. There was kind of a scattering of reasons that built up that. Yeah. Uh, but one of the main majority ones that we heard, or I certainly heard, I won't speak for anybody else, was they didn't feel that there was enough information provided to the public or enough vetting of the current site to say, let's build it somewhere else. So that kind of resonated and the understanding now was, all right, so there was some looking into this, there was some determinations and information and mm -hmm. concepts that we acted on, that's why we went to the other site. But now let's drill back down into these and let's almost start back at square one and let's be sure that we're still accurate in that. And yep. if we are gonna stick to this current site, which is fine, what exactly can we build? It might right. not be 100% what we wanted to build, but it could be something that might just be as good. Because, um, right, because it's a very different yeah. site. It's a very different site. It's a smaller site, the layout's different, and there's a building that's currently in operation on it. So there were some concerns there about what happens to the current residents, what if you start to shift, um, construction impacts, things like that that were great concerns to us when we were kind of looking through this. But we want to take a revisit at that and say, you know, anything's truly possible. It just might cost a lot more. But who are we really to say without the vote to say, yes, the town does not want to move forward with it this way. And because so what we've done now is the town or the select board, excuse me, took that information and a recommendation was made to um, kind of start back at square one, engage somebody to just look specifically at the current site. What can we do with our current operations? Yep. Can we renovate on our current site? 
or what can we rebuild on our current site? So you're kind of looking at it in two different ways. If the current island home wasn't there and you wanted to build a completely new building, what would that look like? What would the cost and what would the impact of the residents be? And, or, could you could use the current building, renovate it, and still kind of build something new? So we recently have engaged a group. Um, it's called Clifton Larson. I'm sorry, Allison, you had, you had a question. Um, I wasn't sure. I just want, I mean, it's interesting that Nantucket is the only municipally owned nursing home in the, in the state. The sec, this two. Oh, it, um, Taunton's still open? Taunton is still a oh, municipally owned okay. nursing home. Um, and that's why the town is so involved in making decisions about it. Yeah. Um, it's built on town land, the town runs it, and that's really great for Nantucket. It, you know, it wouldn't work probably in many other places because the influx of people coming from neighboring towns. I mean, no town wants to support um, everybody yeah, else. Yeah, everybody else, but right. we're yeah. pretty unique in that it's really hard to <laughs> come over here to well, drift by. That as well, um, and building off of that, I think the other thing that we have here is we're very highly subsidized by the town, um, and we probably will be in perpetuity, which is fine as long as the town is willing to continue to do that, and I've never really got a strong sense that that's not going to happen. Um, but neighboring, or not neighboring, um, other cities, towns, such as Taunton, one of their things that they have is that if they do say, you know what, this is starting to cost too much, this is becoming a drain on the taxpayers, this money really could be better utilized for true town functions and not the nursing home when there's another one 10 miles on the road or there's one 20 miles this way. And unfortunately on Nantucket, it's just us. It's we don't right. have another nursing home. We no don't have enough of a demand to need another nursing home. Right. And the capital expenditure up front is just so much that I don't see that happening anyways. Um, again, anything's possible, but I've never heard that anybody's going to do that. And a lot of people might not know this, but especially since I've been there, we've had multiple, multiple groups, for-profit, non-profit, other private, come in and say, let me take a look at your operations. Maybe we might want to take this over. You know, the town's operating it. It's kind of unique for Massachusetts. Let's yeah. take a look. But because we do run such a deficit, based on how our operations are, we're very heavily, um, our census is mostly Medicaid or MassHealth reliant, right. which obviously our reimbursement rates are very much below what our actual cost is. Uh, nobody really wants to take that over because they know that you would, you, I think at one point we actually learned that we would need about 110 beds filled, somewhere around there, to start to break even. Um, and it's, that's just not there. It's our not our census, double the, it's, right. yeah, or it's more than triple. Our That's census right. right now is maybe 36. Right, and then it would be a very different place. One yeah. of the things that makes it so special And it would be a size. much larger building, and right. it would it would definitely be run maybe a little differently than how we're running it now. Right. Um, so we don't have that benefit. We don't have the option to say, you know, we're just not gonna do this anymore because then all the people who we are meeting their needs for on the island would have to go elsewhere. So it is unfortunate because then you have travel and everybody knows that you're trying to get more services here on the island to right. prevent that burden on families to travel off island to get access to health care right. services. And what, a, and what a tough thing if you, would, yeah. if you actually had a family member that was off island right. in the nursing home yeah. to be able to go back. So, yeah. so, so, so what so we're I want kind to of looking at now is yeah. saying, all right, yeah. well, maybe we can't do this, yeah. which, you know, would be wonderful. It would be great. It would be, you know, the absolute... If you could have anything you ever wanted, this is what we would want. So maybe we can't necessarily have that, but what can we have? And it doesn't mean it's going to be any less of a facility or any less quality or any, you know, right. less than what our 100% wish was. But at least we'll still have something that we can do and something that's still supported by the community. So that's what this group is looking to do now is kind of take a look at our operations yeah. and look at what we can do on the current site. And, and we'll and start me to about, have and meetings. I, I'm sorry, tell me, yep. tell me about timeline just because we're running a little close on, on time, time and I want to make sure that people know <laughs> kind of what's going on. What, sure. Yeah, what's, ne what's next? Well, we just engaged the contract and they have been asked to get us some kind of report by December of 2018. 
Um, so again, kind of like the senior center, right. I don't anticipate that there will be anything necessarily uh, available for annual town meeting. And that's just what based I want on, folks to get a yeah, sense of. Yeah, just okay. based on how the timeline of the warrant works. And, and certainly and not all for those. this fall. They no, wouldn't be hearing about it. No, that's already fall. closed. There's right. no option right. for that. Um, and I don't think that it'll be really ready for um, April of 2019's town meeting. but. I think that's a good thing because we'll get that report and then we can take that and build on that and then start moving forward to say, okay, this is what we can do and then rebring that back into the community. Um, this group also though will yeah. engage the community throughout their process as well. So it's not like they're all of a sudden just gonna get a paper report and right. say, here, read 100 pages, here's the information. And, and that's you know, not I how think, it's you know, I think there's a really, I mean, I think the upside of all of this also is that there will be ways for the community and the people who have lived or worked or been at the island home to contribute and because yeah. Nantucket is so different mm -hmm. we don't necessarily need to have what you know the biggest and the best and the shiniest and the you know nope th there nope. are several models of care we can look at yep. you know yeah. and because we're a town owned or municipally owned um, nursing home yeah. we can like we don't have to talk to a profit you know, no. we aren't going to try to make a anyway. I mean, a, a lot of anyway. places are fully private rooms, fully private baths, you know, a lot of square footage per resident, and that's great. Um, but maybe we could scale it back. Maybe there could be shared bathrooms. So yeah, the two rooms are sharing a bathroom. Yeah, there the are a lot thing? of places right. and people who do come in either as couples or family members we have had sisters before and they might want to share a room so we're not, we're we're looking at ways that we want to make it moving away from the industrial or not industrial um, institutional institutional, <laughs> and keep, institutional and keep, type of model yeah, and yeah. keep it home like so that there's a comfort there but it doesn't necessarily have to have all the bells and whistles and that's going to be the that's going to be a fun thing because it really is yeah. a wonderful place now to be able to keep that specialness yeah while at the same time being able to make it all work absolutely so so. We're running close on time because this was a very exciting conversation. So and I like thank, to talk. Thank you so much for coming. We really, Absolutely. really appreciate it. I think this was just wonderful. Yeah, I think we're going we're to follow up with several of the people that you had talked about, I mm -hmm. think, on this show. And so thanks very much for watching. Um, on behalf of both Allison and I, we look forward to seeing you on the, uh, on the next installment of uh, Frank and Mary on Nantucket. And thank you, Rachel Day. Thank, thank you. you.